In this lesson, we're going to take a dive into Microsoft Teams settings. There are several questions that can be answered just by knowing where Microsoft Teams hid the customization options. Now, we're not going to jump into every single setting, mostly because a lot of them will be controlled by your IT admin. Microsoft has many ways to access settings. For this lesson, we will use the three dots for settings and more at the top right side of the screen. Click on that and then choose settings from the drop-down menu. On the left side of the screen, the navigation pane will show the full settings menu. It is important to note that I am demonstrating from the Teams desktop application. Some of the options I will mention may not be visible if you're using Teams on the web. On the general tab, we're going to look at a few commonly adjusted settings, starting with what happens when you click a link or notification. By default, when you click a link or notification, it will close whatever you are working on and switch to the new task. To avoid this frustration, change the setting to new window. Then you will keep your place on the original task while viewing the new link or notification. If we scroll down to the starting chat section, you will see a similar setting. By default, whenever you're having a conversation in chat, it will be in the main window. When you switch to a new chat, the old one will close and the new one will open. You can choose to open as many chats as you want in new windows so that you can have multiple conversations going on at once. One of the newer options for Teams channel messages is to decide if the most recent activity shows at the bottom or at the top. If you choose to have the most recent activity at the top, the newest messages and the Start New Post button will move to the top of the page to reduce scrolling. It is also worth noting that the options for how to create a new post are slightly different depending on the choice you make. I will show more details about that in the lesson about creating posts in Teams channels. The last thing we will look at under general settings is creating an out of office reply. The out of office does synchronize with Outlook, so you do not have to set it up in both places. One key difference is that Teams does not have the formatting options found in Outlook. If you want to bold words, embed hyperlinks, or specify a time period, Outlook is a better option. Otherwise, you can add a quick message here in Teams and then turn on your out of office. Now we're gonna jump down to privacy settings. Most of these you will leave the default. The one I would like to point out is do not disturb. Whenever you are screen sharing, Teams is going to automatically block notifications and calls so that they do not pop up on your screen. However, if you need a specific person or persons to get a hold of you, regardless of whether or not you're screen sharing, you can do this by managing priority access. This is kind of like setting up Do Not Disturb on your cell phone and then allowing specific contacts to always call you. But in this case, the people you select will work for the same company you do. In this example, Nestor and I are working on a high priority project and I need him to be able to contact me at any time. Many of the questions people have about customizing the team's experience can be solved by adjusting notification and activity settings. This is where you will go to adjust how often team sends you pop-up banners, plays sounds, and adds things to your activity bell. Almost every notification is turned on when you first get a Teams account. The first option on the page is kind of like the easy button. It is a toggle to mute all notifications except calls and meetings. When you turn this on, there's a checkbox to decide if you want to let urgent notifications through. While this is a quick and easy option, I suggest taking some time to customize your settings based on your work patterns. I have found that the most common scenario is that people need some, but not all notifications. In the sound section, the default ping is played for both regular and urgent notifications. If you look to the right side of the screen, you will see two drop-down boxes to change the sound associated with each one. For the regular notifications, 
There are seven additional sounds to choose from. For urgent notifications, there are an additional three sounds to choose from. If you don't want any sound for a particular style of notification, you can remove the checkbox next to it. For example, I find it distracting to hear sounds when I'm in a meeting. In the display section, you can choose whether or not your pop-up notifications include a preview of the message and whether or not those messages should pop up during calls and meetings. The Missed Activities email section is where you will go to decide how often Teams sends a message to Outlook letting you know that you have missed some notifications. If you click the drop down on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that your choices range from as soon as possible to no notifications at all. The chats and channel section is where most people focus on making changes. As you may have noticed, Teams likes to send a lot of pop-up notifications that appear in the bottom right corner of the screen. When talking about settings, these are called banners. Therefore, if you don't want to have so many pop-ups, you will need to change your settings to remove banner notifications. For example, a coworker of mine called me and said, I'm in a group chat and I am getting way too many pop-ups. How do I make this stop? The answer was to come here in the notification settings, come to the chat message notifications part of the page, click the drop down box on the right hand side of the screen and switch it from show in banner to off. This will only impact chat messages if you want to modify notifications for posts in Teams channels, you will scroll down and adjust the next four sections. The main difference between chats and posts are that posts can also receive notifications in the activity bell and chats cannot. Therefore, you will see three options instead of two. For example, if I don't want to be notified when someone at mentions a whole team or channel, I can click the drop down and choose to only see the notification under the bell icon, or I can turn both off. Let me share a quick little story about why a lot of people tend to turn off the at mentions for teams and channels. I used to be a moderator for a Microsoft 365 support team that had over 2000 members. What would happen is one person would send a question and they would at mention the entire team thinking that it was only going to the moderators. When in reality, that at mention was going to all 2000 plus people causing pop-up notifications and activity bell notifications. When several people start doing this, what happens is people become overloaded by all the notifications that don't relate to their specific work. I encourage you to scroll through and look at how the same three settings apply to the other options, such as whether or not you want to be notified of likes and reactions. As we scroll down the notifications and activity page, you can see there are options to decide how many notifications you want to get from Teams meetings, whether or not you want to keep track of the status of a particular person and be notified when they are online, you can choose how often you will be notified about new calendar invites and cancellations, as well as whether or not you wanna be notified when people forward the meetings you have organized. And in the last section, you can decide whether to turn notifications on or off for apps that you may have added to Microsoft Teams. What you see in the app section is most likely going to be different than what I'm showing here because this depends on the apps that you may have added to the left-hand navigation rail or to the top of a Teams channel. Now we're gonna jump down to the devices section. If you're having issues where you cannot hear things in Teams or people say they cannot hear you when you are speaking, it's most likely due to something in the audio settings. By default, Teams tries to pick the audio devices associated with your laptop or computer. It can get a bit tricky when you're using external devices, especially with desktop computers. So if you click on the drop down, notice that I have several different options for speakers. 
The most common scenario I see is that a monitor might be in conflict with a external speaker and you would just have to switch it to the appropriate device. The same thing goes for the microphone. Teams generally tries to associate the microphone with whatever webcam you have, but if you have multiple devices plugged in, you will need to choose which one you want to use. The last section of settings we're gonna look at that generate the most questions is files and links. This is where you will go to decide where your files will download using Microsoft Teams. Now keep in mind again, I am using the desktop app. This is not available on the web app. When you're using Teams on your desktop computer, the default is to automatically send all files to your downloads folder. However, you can click on this change button and choose a different folder. Or if you're like most people I know, you have a different place to save files depending on the task you're working on. So you could just prompt Teams to ask you every single time. The other thing people tend to adjust a lot is how their Word, PowerPoint, and Excel files should open when you click on them in Teams. You can choose whether or not it should open in the Teams content pane or whether or not it should open in a browser. If you want your Word, PowerPoint, or Excel files to open automatically in the desktop versions of those applications, that can be done but you cannot set it as a default. And we will cover that in our lessons about file management. That brings us to the end of our getting started section. We have talked about language bridging, basic navigation, and how to modify some common settings. In the next lesson, we're gonna dive into how to properly create Microsoft Teams.